Okay, AP artists, I'm going to go through some tips about composition today. And these are things that I may not have covered with you guys before. And um, this might be a little bit dense, so feel free to pause, go back, take some notes. Um, I really love taking visual notes about composition. And there's a lot of vocabulary embedded in here. And it's okay if you don't know it all or if you don't want to follow all of these tips, but I just really wanted to give you a refresher on some of the uh, tips and tricks about creating strong compositions in your works. And this is going to be uh, something you should be thinking about with every single piece that you make. So the word composition is relating to how we put things together in our works of art. It's the arrangement and placement of your visual elements. And you use the principles of art to create your compositions, whether you're doing this um, intentionally or just from a feeling. And I want you to think about some of these techniques uh, that you may not have really thought about consciously before. So there's a bunch of different techniques you can use to achieve uh, uni unity in your work and aesthetically pleasing artworks. These are some different things that we're going to talk about today. Rule of thirds, I'm sure you've heard about. Rule of odds, perhaps you haven't heard it spoken this way. Rule of space, leading lines, focal point, perspective and depth, distance between objects, unoccupied and unoccupied space, or I think this should be occupied and unoccupied space, color temperature, repetition, and some tools for how to capture your scenes. So first of all, the rule of thirds. Um, basically, the rule of thirds is di dictates that you should not replace your focal point in the center of your composition. So if you look at this painting by Paul Cezanne, uh, you'll see that the focal point is about here, and this is also an interesting place here. So when you superimpose a grid, a three by three grid on your piece, so it looks like a tic-tac-toe board, your focal point or your interesting pieces of your uh, painting or drawing should go into one of these four sweet spots rather than right in the middle. The rule of odds uh, suggests that we use odd numbers of subjects in our piece. So um, an odd number of elements is considered more visually interesting and aesthetically pleasing. If you have an even number, it's a little bit more static. So um, odd numbers of figures are a little bit more dynamic. The rule of space, uh, we want to be conscious about how we use space in our pieces. So uh, we use space to invite the viewer into the piece. Um, and one of the ways that we can do this is through leading lines. So leading lines are compositional lines that direct our eye into a composition. So it's especially uh, showing in this photograph, the way this table is positioned, these lines on the table are drawing us into this composition and kind of inviting us into this scene. Same thing with this Vermeer painting. Um, the lines, the perspective lines of the wall and the floor are leading our eye into this piece and showing us these figures toward the back. Now, um, something else we should be thinking about when we use space in our pieces is giving the figures in our piece room to breathe or room to move. So if you have a uh, figure, especially in your piece, and they are, for example, running, you want to give them enough space in front of them in your composition that it looks like they could go into that area of your piece rather than looking like they would just fall off the edge. Uh, so, and, and same thing with looking, uh, looking lines. So like this figure is looking in this direction and there's plenty of room for this figure to look through this piece. If this figure was facing this direction, it would feel a little bit awkward and off balance. So the uh, two figures are sort of looking inward into the composition. 
Uh, this figure staring at the viewer is a very dynamic way of inviting the viewer in as well. Focal point. So the focal point is where your eye is drawn in a piece. You can obviously include more than one focal point and there are different ways of determining a focal point. So here you can use a pop of color that uh, differs from the area around it. Here using contrast, so large portions of this Edward Hopper painting are dark. However, these two figures are much more brightly lit and so our, fo our focus is drawn to them. Uh, so that's a contrast. And you can also use size to help determine your focal point. So this uh, very large tower is standing out. There's also some color uh, creating this focal point as well. So there's sort of two, two focal points in this piece. Now obviously this is not following, these, these pieces are not necessarily following the rule of thirds. Uh, however, you don't have to follow all of these things all the time. They're just tool toolkits or, or tools in your toolbox of how to create successful compositions. Perspective and depth. So part of what we strive to do when we're creating two-dimensional works of art is trying to make a sense of depth in our work. Um, this is obviously a three-dimensional piece, but you could imagine this as a drawing as well, uh, creating repetitious forms to create a sense of depth. So foreground, middle ground, and background, we've talked about a lot. Uh, you want to have things in your immediate foreground that you can see that sort of draw your eye into the piece. You want to have things in the middle distance of your piece, and you want to have things in the far distant background if you want to create a nice sense of depth in your piece. This is particularly pertinent when it comes to landscapes. Something else to think about is the distance you put between your objects. So this is a very um, cacophonous, detailed, crazy Bruegel painting. And there are many, many figures in here. But one thing I'd like you to think about is how these figures are grouped. There is not a grid-like pattern. There's not a clear sense of order to this. There are groupings of figures. There is some negative space between the figures, and there are overlapping figures together. So creating a sense of um, a dynamic composition when you have a lot of information like this, you really want to think about how the eye moves through the composition and where your negative spaces are. So changing, varying the space that you have between the objects in your piece, varying the angles, the sizes of your objects, um, all of that helps really create a sense of interest and dynamism in your piece. Now this is a, is a very old work of art, I think it's from the 16th century, and obviously the sense of depth, it's a little bit more flattened. Uh, we're sort of getting a bird's eye view, but there's not a very clear sense of perspective. It's a bit more of a decorative space, um, but there's still a really great sense of interesting groupings of figures and interesting um, negative spaces here. Occupied and unoccupied space. This is also relating to the sense of um, negative space. So as an artist, it's really important to see the spaces around and between your objects. Um, and here are three different, very different pieces uh, and I really love, uh, Magritte is one of my favorite artists, and you can see how he really plays with a sense of negative space here. It's like a, a cutout shape of this vase of flowers, but in that is a scene of the outside, so it's becoming like a window. And the dark background really creates these unique and really uh, engaging negative spaces all around the outer parts of these flowers. This uh, Tara Donovan piece is layers of polyester film and I believe, not exactly sure how this is created, but you can see it creates a really interesting sense of 
negative spaces and sort of depth in between. And this piece is literally occupied and unoccupied spaces, a bathtub filled with soap, uh, a sculptural piece, quite interesting. Um, also be thinking about color temperature in your works. So as you can see, these are two self-portraits by Van Gogh. Uh, one is predominantly a warm color scheme and the other is predominantly a cool color scheme. So if you want your piece to feel very unified, you should shoot for mostly focusing on one type of color scheme, either warm or cool. If your pieces are all vibrant rainbow colors, every single color included, it may not feel as unified or as calm. Also be thinking about repetition in your works. So there are different ways that you can use repetition of different types of elements of art. So you can repeat a different element. So repetition of colors, repetition of spaces, repetition of patterns. So here is a repetition of shapes and colors. This is Yayoi Kusama. And you can see she's repeating chunks of colors and repeating dot-like patterns on large and small scales. This is a piece by M.C. Escher, and he is repeating different um, shapes and forms within his composition to create interesting senses of space. Um, obviously this is sort of an optical illusion that's really unique and interesting. And uh, you can repeat shapes to create a pattern. So uh, Peck Nam Jun's work, he used lots of media and television sets. So this is um, sets of nine TVs in a pattern and that creates an interesting set of repetition as well. Lastly, some tools for how to capture your scenes. Um, when you are looking at a piece or looking at a subject matter in person, it can be difficult to kind of zero in on what you want your composition to be. So one thing that's really useful if you are standing somewhere and you want to kind of zero in on where you want to create your piece, you can create a viewfinder. This is as easy as cutting a rectangle out of a sheet of paper. Um, I like using a black sheet of paper and holding that viewfinder up to your scene so that you can get a sense of, ah, I just want to get this chunk of this composition and um, that will help you sort of zero in on your subject. You can also take photos using a camera uh, your cell phone works for this as well. If you superimpose the grid view on your camera as well, you can get a head start on thinking about the rule of thirds in your composition. So um, those are both good ways of kind of zeroing in on what you want your subject matter to be. You can also crop images after you have taken them to experiment with different types of compositions after you have taken them as well. So I hope this was helpful. Please uh, enjoy creating lots of dynamic and unique compositions in your work and ask me any questions that you may have. I know this is a lot of information all at once and um, feel free to return to this whenever.